Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to the Woolly Worker Knitting Podcast. My name is Venetia, I am the Woolly Worker and this is episode number 12. I'm quite excited to be filming today as always. I don't know what happened but there have been many many finished objects in the last few days and they just kept on reaching the point where they were getting finished and going from work in progress to FO. So today will be very finished object heavy, I hope you don't mind, and there will be lots of modeling shots and like b-roll and everything, so it's going to be a big one. Get ready, get yourself some drinks, some knitting, I hope that you find this episode enjoyable and relaxing. I tried to record this podcast episode a few days ago and I was just feeling all over the place and very like brain foggy and chatty. So what I think I'm going to do is film this as best I can today and then probably in the next few days record a knit and chat like that will be less structured and, and more chill and where I can get out all of those thoughts uh, out of my mind without interfering with this kind of podcast because obviously some people prefer to watch knit and chats and some people prefer to watch the normal episodes. But anyway, if you want to follow me on other social media, you can find me on Ravelry and on Instagram at The Woolly Worker, same as here on YouTube. You can find more behind the scenes, polls to vote on in my Instagram stories, more information on Ravelry such as the amounts of yarns that I used or any other modifications or anything that I don't mention on YouTube, it probably will be on Ravelry because I use that app uh, religiously. If you're new here uh, and you don't know me, then I'm Venetia, I'm from Belgium, I live in Scotland with my partner and I work as a CBT therapist for the NHS and I created this podcast a few months ago to help me externalize all of my knitting obsessive thoughts and connect with people in the community and it's been really great. So if you like this content, don't hesitate to give it a like or comment or subscribe or share the channel to your knitty friends. It always helps the channel grow and motivates me to create more content for you. Okay, I think that's all of the admin out of the way. Actually, no, there's one more thing very important. I'm organizing a knit night, knit afternoon, to celebrate a few milestones. I talk about this at length in the previous episode, so I'll put a link to that on the screen now so that you can hear more about it. But long story short, organizing a knit night on the 1st of July, Saturday, from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. British summertime. And I really, really hope that you can join me to celebrate all of that. And everyone is welcome. To get the details on how to join, just message me either on Ravelry or Instagram or by email. All of the contact links, links will be down below uh, and so will all the information about the yarns and projects that I talk about in this podcast as well as timestamps if you want to skip ahead or navigate the video more easily. So I think that is all out of the way now and let's get into the nitty chat without further ado. Like I said, I think I have seven finished objects, a couple works in progress, and then a few swatches and knitting plans and a couple acquisitions. So that's very exciting and I really hope that you are as happy as I am about like knitting in the summer and I've really been leaning into silk and linen. There's a lot of silk in this. There's also a crochet project, so stay tuned for that. But I won't go into too much detail because it's not as exciting as the clothes. So the first thing is what I am wearing now. And this is the camisole number four by My Favorite Things Knitwear. It was quite fast to do. I was kind of using it as my on-the-go project, so I didn't finish it as fast as I could have. But I can see this being like a one or two week project. I made this in the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the color cardamom. And I'm really, really happy with that. It's kind of like a really cool toned brown, uh, which I think suits me. It's like a medium. It's not like too light or too dark a color. And I think it, it's a good kind of... It matches my complexion well, I think, so I'm really really pleased with that color. I bought it back in December, or November even, in preparation for the summer months, so I was happy to already have this in my stash. Uh, I think I bought it on sale as well, so this was only a one and a half kind project, very affordable. I guess while I'm at it, I'll put the price that this was. Usually I keep that for the end of the, like, talk about the project, but here it is. Here's the price of how much it cost me to make this camisole. Like I said, I've got the yarn on sale, and I only used one and a bit of its kind. I made the size extra small, I used 3.25 millimeter needles for the body and then 3 millimeter for the eye cord. And this is a really popular project, you probably have heard of it or seen it already. I have, I feel like I have quite a lot of thoughts about this and I was struggling to get this across in the last time I tried to film this episode. So I think what I'm going to do is organize my thoughts into what I like about this project and what I don't like. And I think I'll talk about what I don't like first 
so that we can end on a positive note. So what I don't like is that I think I made it too small. What I had read about it at length was all the issues people were having with it being too large and baggy and oversized, and I think I overcorrected. So I made the size extra small even though I should have been a small. I went down a needle size because I'm quite a loose knitter anyway. I also made the eye cords quite small or smaller than I think I should have, which is my main gripe or yeah my main problem with this is that I think the eye cords are too small and when I pull down on it and give myself a bit more cleavage I like it and I think it flatters me and it's really nice and I like the length that I did it I will obviously have been showing uh, images on screen of me wearing it so you can see it from a distance I like the length that I made it at but sometimes I feel like when the eye cords are not stretched and it rides too high up I don't think that is that flattering and it comes up in my armpits so I'm, I keep having to pull it down, which I think I'm trying to give myself some grace and I, I want to give this a chance and see what it will be like after two months of wearing constantly because this is really comfortable. So I do, I do see myself wearing this a lot and I really wonder what it's going to be like, you know, right now after having finished it versus in two months when the eye cords will have loosened up even more because I already blocked this so they have loosened but I've not worn it that much. So eye cords are too small a lot of negative ease, but it's quite comfortable, so it's just a different look than I was going for, but I'm not particularly mad about it, I'm happy with the extra small. But next time if I made another one, and I probably would, maybe like a black one, then I would make it in small and looser and longer. Um, I'm happy that I went down the needle size because I didn't want my fabric to be too see-through. The other thing that I did, which I do like, so we're kind of moving towards nice things now, I did a clean edge on the triangles because, as you can see, you don't pick up afterwards to do any sort of edging. What you do is what you get, and some people were saying that the edge was a bit uneven, and you could do it tighter, like tightly your stitches, the first and the last, but just to give myself like a better chance, I did a... I started every row with a purl stitch and ended every row on a knit stitch. And I put those details on Ravelry and that was also taken from advice of people on Ravelry. So didn't invent that myself. I finished it where I thought I wanted to and then I put it on like a, a cord, blocked it and it dried not too slowly actually. I was surprised by how fast it dried and then afterwards I was not happy with how cropped it was and it was also because my straps were shorter the body would obviously come up higher compared to my shoulder, not the underarm necessarily, I hope that makes sense. So I put it back on the needles, added like five, four, four or five more centimeters, and then I didn't block it again, I just like bound off. The bind off I used, I read a lot about people's struggles to find a good bind off because you want it to be stretchy so you can put it over your head and shoulders and everything and it doesn't feel restrictive and also if it goes over your hips you don't want it to be too tight but also you don't want it to be too loose and stretchy and lose its shape and flare out I really didn't want it to flare so what I did was a, a decrease bind off where you knit two together through the back loop and then you put that stitch back on the working needle or like the left hand needle and then you decrease two through back loop again etc but what I did as well to give even more stretch is that between all of those I did one knit stitch so I put the details on that on my Ravelry because it's just really difficult to explain that uh, and if you're going through this and you're wanting to do this project and you need help with the bind off then I'm happy to explain that to you because I really like it it's not invisible but it's really neat and it gives this like nice line of stitches, which I really like. In some of the photos you might see that the, like, the last four centimeters of my project, when it's unblocked, is a different color than the rest of the project. And I'm not worried about that because I, it's the same ball, so it's not a dialogue issue, it's just that it wasn't blocked. And I think when I come back from my holiday, where I will be taking this, I'll give it another wash and block and stretch out the cords even more. And um, yeah, it'll just be all even. But I was just really eager to, to get this project finished. So I do really love the yarn. That is the number one thing I like about this project, is how amazing it feels. Uh, I am obsessed with this Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. It's not, like, the most affordable, but it's not the priciest either. And usually you're doing summer garments, so you don't need that many. Uh, usually for my size, I need two balls of uh, Knitting for Olive for a camisole, and maybe four balls for a t-shirt. What I don't want to do is to buy it, to hold it double, I think that would be a waste of money. So I'm just going to be doing the fingering weight pure silk projects. I've got this um, bundle on Ravelry 
of all the patterns I want to do with Pure Silk. If you want to give a look, I could put that in the description actually. So I've curated a list of all the Pure Silk items because I've become obsessed with this yarn. I want it in all the colors. I know they're coming out with even new colors, especially blues, so I'm really excited for that. I don't know when it's gonna happen, but they've announced that on their Instagram. But yeah, it's so, so, so comfortable to wear. I'm not wearing a bra underneath right now, and I am not feeling like the most confident and comfortable, but if I was wearing a little shirt on top, then it would be fine. Obviously, if I was wearing a bra, you'd be able to see the strap, so it's just, I'm gonna need to find what to wear this with in my wardrobe. But I'm really, really pleased with it, and it's really comfy to just wear at home. Like, even if I'm not going out in the heat, this is just perfect to relax in. Super comfortable, really happy with it, except the straps. But I don't want to give judgment, like my final judgment now, because I don't know if it's gonna become better after a few weeks of wear. So I've already said the price that this was. And I would highly recommend the pattern, it was really nicely written, lots of sizes available, um, lots of people giving notes on Ravelry as well, so don't be afraid and just do a bit of research before jumping in. And maybe do a gauge swatch? I didn't. You could use one of the triangles as a gauge swatch, because the way that you construct this is that you're gonna end up having to cut your yarn anyway. So yeah, do a triangle, do a gauge swatch, and see. Oh yeah, one more thing. Uh, if I did modifications, I think maybe instead of an I-cord like this, that just goes all the way like that, I would do two I-cords, and then I would join them here with like a little knot, so I would bind off the eye cords and then tie them, which someone recommended on my YouTube uh, video last time. I just like the look of that less, but I do like the practicality and versatility of being able to adjust the length of the straps as and when they stretch out and grow. So probably something to keep in mind that would be good to do. And then the other option would be to do a stockinette a strap, like thicker, or a garter one, or a double knit strap. So basically, I want to try a lot of different summer camisoles, see what different straps they use, and then in the end I would be able to mix and match and substitute as and when required. But in the meantime, I'm happy I gave those eye cords a try because I need to figure out what my perfect eye cord length is and how it behaves in the yarn so that I can make better informed decisions in the future. The last thing to mention, and then I'll move on, is that um, for the length, so like I said, I'm quite happy with where it hits me on my body now. It's kind of like on my hip. It was quite hard because some people like it really cropped, but then it's really hard to gauge how to do that because it will grow when you block it. And then something that would have ended up being cropped would not after block. And then what if you stop too early and then it's too cropped? So what I'm, what I did was that I aimed for my hips basically, or just a bit above the hips, but I'm keeping all my yarn, the rest of my yarn handy so that if I ever want to, I could undo my bind off, join new yarn, and then make it quite long, and then I could tuck it in trousers and pants and everything. So I'm, I'm not gonna use the yarn for anything. It's gonna be a very handy little uh, matching dialog thing to have if I want to lengthen this later. I've also seen people doing dresses of camisole number four, which is amazing, but I obviously don't have enough yarn for that. Okay, anyway, I think we're good for this finished item. The next one, I guess, let's just keep it camisole themed and I will show you my next finished camisole, which is the Home Camisole by Kadri. Here it is. So, um, I made this in the Rerum Natura in Penelope, which is a 90% merino, 10% silk. So, it's not that much like to show here. Uh, you'll see it better on photos that I will flash on screen. Uh, I really like this. It's quite... It's quite drapey. I remember at first feeling like I had messed up with my yarn choice. Uh, why did I pick something that was 90% merino when some people over there are doing it in linen and everything? It's a DK weight project, so it's kind of rare to find summery DKs that aren't cotton, which I'm not like the biggest fan of. I prefer linen and silk, which are usually fingering weight. And like I said, I don't like buying those things to hold double. Uh, but I'm quite happy with it because I know I won't overheat in summer uh, in Scotland with the merino, it, it'll be fine and it was quite nice to work with. It blocked up beautifully and relaxed. At first I had started with, I think, 3.5 millimeters, but I went up to 3.75 because it was too dense. And I really like the fabric that the 3.75 gave me. The 4 millimeter, I think, would have been too big. The original uses cashmere, but I really wasn't about to buy six balls of cashmere um, for a summer top. It just didn't make sense to me. So. Same as this camisole, unfortunately I am not the happiest with this project because I overcorrected because of all the notes I had read about people 
uh, ending, ending up too big. So it's too small. Again, the straps I shortened on the home camisole, so they became too small. I also made the size uh, small instead of medium, I think, for my size. And then I decreased, I removed some stitches from the underarm, and I did some body waist shaping. So all of those contributed to this being a bit too small, especially before blocking. After blocked, it relaxed a bit, which I'm quite happy with. I used a, a smaller needle to then pick up all the stitches and do all the eye cord finishing, which actually was really, really enjoyable. I quite like that. The only thing was that at first I kind of botched the job of grafting the eye cord beginning and the end uh, and you could really see that especially on the shoulder on one of them where you started for the, the neckline I think and I was really unhappy with that and then I took the time to actually unweave my ends undo the graft and then do it the proper way because what I had done was that I had bound off the eye cord and then used a needle to sort of join it it was really messy but what you're meant to do is you keep the eye cord stitches live on the needle and then you kitchener stitch them with the needle instead of binding it off beforehand and that gives you a much neater finish, like seamless and visible. And I'm so so glad I took the time to do that. I think it's this is your sign if you're waiting for one. Don't skimp on the finishing touches. I think someone said you should spend almost as much time doing the finishing of a project than the whole project itself because this is really what can make or break it. The body shaping that I did, I'm not like super happy with, but it was an experiment, so I'm not mad either. I was trying to see, like I was trying to use this website that gave very detailed instructions on where to place, like waist decreases and increases. And basically you decrease in the first third, and then you increase in the last two thirds, and you give a bit of space in between those. And the way that I did it, I thought it was all gonna be handy dandy, but the decreases ended up like, on my breast and bust as opposed to like at my waist which I'm not sure if that was meant to happen and I don't want to get too 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 into this because last time I tried to film this this is where I got all tripped up but I'm happy I tried this waist shaping maybe next time I'll just buy a project that already has waist shaping instructions and learn from there as opposed to me trying to to go too out of my depth and try to add waist shaping to a project that didn't have instructions for it so I'm happy I tried it definitely still some learning to do and because of the way you do them you do like knit two together slip slip knit which is not invisible when you're doing a, a sea of stockinette but you can't see too too much on my camisole that I did some decreases and increases so not mad so this project I'm kind of feeling lukewarm about it I'm happy I have it it's very wearable and I know that it has a place in my wardrobe especially like it's just such a simple top that you can there then wear fancy trousers or shorts or whatever or accessories. The color I'm not a huge fan of. I don't think it's my color. I don't know what I was thinking when I bought this yarn. I like the name of the color. It was like or rose, so like rose gold. And I like the idea of it. I just think it's better suited to like to be people who are more tan or have dark hair. And I'm neither of those. So yeah, I think I'm definitely happy I have the pattern because I really want to do it again with different yarn, especially yarn um, fiber types. And I'll definitely do it in a different color next time and give myself more ease. So I would do it again. The final cost of this project I'll put here on the screen. It was quite affordable. I also got this yarn on sale, 15% off I think. And I really, really like the yarn. So keeping that as a definitely like try again yarn, maybe for a sweater instead of this, because it's really, really comfortable next to skin. It's like a better version of the Double Sunday by Scentless Garn. They don't have that many colors, but the colors that they do have are beautiful. I think the camisole is like a tad too long. I should have stopped maybe like an, an inch shorter. But honestly, again, trying to give myself some grace, those things are so hard to estimate. Even though it was an eye cord bind off, so technically you know that when you stop knitting, you're only gonna have like a half inch or like a centimeter of like extra fabric as opposed to when you're doing ribbing where it's hard to visualize what five centimeters of ribbing will look like. I could just make it smaller. The um, eye cord is definitely not as elastic as like everything which contributes to it feeling quite restrictive and tightening and I think what I don't like with the home camisole is the shaping of the triangles which that's on me like th that was obvious in the pattern. I just think with all those summer tops that are coming out and all those different shapes, I'm trying to find what I like. So you have crew necks, v-necks, spaghetti straps, thick straps, like 
mock necks even, the shoulders like halter shoulders or straight shoulders. There's just so many different upper body shapes and I want to f see what I like on me. And the only way I can do that is either by like trying on like trying on ready-made garments in the shops and seeing what I like on my body or just keep on knitting different patterns until I finally find something that I think flatters me the most and what body parts I want to accentuate or like not bring attention to. It, I'm, I'm gonna try. So those, those triangles, the home camisole, I don't think is the best on my body. This one I quite like when it's at the right like lower like cleavage thing I like, otherwise I think the triangles are too high. So follow me on this journey as I try and find which camisoles I like best on my body, I guess. I was playing yarn chicken, unbe un unbeknownst to me, I had four balls and I didn't do... The gauge swatch that I did was kind of like a triangle already, like I was recommending you do for this, so I did gauge swatch. I swatched two triangles, one with the 3.5, one with the 3.75. In the end, I used the 3.75 in the project and started knitting on it, and then the 3.5 swatch, I just put it aside, and in the end, that was the only thing I had left with that yarn, so I didn't even need to unpick it, but um, I think if I had made the camisole, like the straps longer, and more underarm stitches like I was meant to, I think I either would have needed to dig into that swatch and used every single inch of that yarn left, or I would have just been short, but then I could have made the body shorter and maybe I would have liked it. So I think I could have just gotten away with four kinds of yarn, a bit shorter length and a bit more ease, is what I'm trying to say. But yeah, it was a nice economical project in the end and really excited to try the project again with a different yarn and more ease to see how different those two would look like on me. It's fascinating, isn't it, how you can have one pattern, use two different yarns and do different modifications of the pattern and, and end up with two completely different looks. But yeah, let's move on to something else. I will talk about an accessory. So I was trying to do a, find a pilot cleanser, do a bit of stash busting, and I was watching some videos from Ode, from Bubbles and Berries, um, she did this Hydra headband by Fiber Tails in one of her older episodes and I really really liked it and it looked gorgeous on her and I had the right amount of yarn according to like my Ravelry like measurement stash so I thought let's do it. So I did it and I've got this little headband. So you might recognize the yarn if you've been following my podcast for a while. Oh yeah. Uh, this is the single malt yarn. This is a yarn that I use for the single malt for my boyfriend. This is Cascade 220 Heathers in chocolate heather and yeah, I added two extra stitches to the larger side of this headband and I did a little like slip stitch edge to get a neat border which I am quite happy with how neat this is and it's very stretchy which is good like at the edges and the flagship thing about this item is the, the braids that you do. It's like a fiber tail technique. I don't think she invented it, but she definitely made it popular. She has a whole sweater with that, but I thought I'd start in easy with a headband. I'll put some photos of me wearing it. It obviously feels weird wearing this like now, but I'll be really happy to have this in winter. Again, I'm not like... I don't know if I love this on me, like big headbands, but they're so useful and practical. So this is not as much about fashion as it is like me being toasty and warm with my ears like covered in winter. Um, I used four millimeter needles. I also found the technique of the braids to be so 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 fun that it was worth it but otherwise it was a slog because of the cable in the middle. I didn't find that fun at all. I, I quite hated it actually to be honest and it looks great but like it's not like anything out of the ordinary or like it's not extra special like the braids are. So what I think I'm going to do, because I have more stash that needs busting, is I'm going to do this headband again. I'll do the thin version just for a bit of a change. I might do what Ode did and when you join it in the back you twist it so that it gets smaller as it gets towards the back of your head to accommodate for like braids and ponytails and stuff. So I think I'll do that modification, do the small version, and then replace that middle cable with a different cable that I'll look into like a, a stitch dictionary book or something, or like any kind of cable that's like over six to eight stitches, I think would be good. And then I'll fudge a bit with the stitch numbers. I think it'll be very exciting. So I really look forward to doing that. And um, the other thing I did with that was that I did a provisional cast on and then 
three needle bind off and it gives that edge which honestly <laughs> is not the best like I don't know yeah look at that that is really not pretty but it'll be at the back of my head anyway and it was a good opportunity to try the three needle bind off but if I were you I would just not bother with the provisional cast on and just cast on normally and then sew it together because you wouldn't get an invisible edge anyway by this technique unless you did it much better than I did. <laughs> you have to be quite careful with the length of that because when you're doing the braids you lose length like maybe like a few centimeters so I'd recommend finishing your headband a bit longer than what you think you need and then it'll like become smaller, reduce but also the designer recommends quite a lot of negative ease. I think mine is on the snug side but I guess that's good. It's just again that's the thing right like everyone who's watching this knows how to knit but god is it hard to know how to call it quits like when to stop on length and fit i find it really difficult here's the price of what that cost obviously not a lot because this only used about um yeah 39 grams of yarn and again i was almost playing yarn chicken because i ended up using every single last inch of yarn i had and it turned out to be the good length that i wanted so really really pleased with that very satisfying stash busting project. I definitely call that a success. Could be a Christmas gift for people. Um, I recommend the pattern. Although, having said that, the instructions are for two different sizes, and then at the end, the finishing only kind of includes the stitch counts of the first size, not the second, where it would have taken like, you know, 10 minutes to do the math for the designer to include the stitch counts of the second size in those bind off instructions. So I think it was a little bit annoying to have to do that myself for a paid pattern um, but I think anyone who knows how to knit and follow the beginning of the pattern would be able to do that work themselves so it's not going to be what prevents you from finishing the project. So yeah, it took about three days to do this project which is quite nice. Okay, the next thing is some socks. So those were still a work in progress when I tried to film this on Thursday but today is Saturday and I finished the socks. And those are from Sari Nordland, they're the Summer Solstice Socks and this is for her summer sock knit along that she does every year. I'm really excited to be doing a challenge this year, especially like fancy socks is something that I want to do more of to try new techniques. So here they are. That's the first one uh, on its own and then that's it on a sock blocker. Oh. So it's so 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 gorgeous, it's absolutely stunning. It's like lace and cables, basically. Now I'll share some photos on screen as I speak. Also, I don't know if you can notice that, but I made mine mirrored. So, mm, I don't know if you're going to be able to see. But on the back, well, you'll see in the photos that I show. On the back, I made the, the stitches twist in like mir mirror ways, which it's nice when the designer gives instructions on how to do that, which she did. So it just like hits that spot in my brain that really likes symmetry. So that's nice. It's got uh, some twisted rib, lots of twisted stitches on the body and the leg of the foot and everything. You've got a slip stitch heel, flap and gusset, and then a round toe. Um, there's charts for this, which I followed, and then there's also written instructions. There's two different sizes. I did the smallest size, and I did it on 2.25mm needles. Be warned that those socks are very tight because of the nature of all the cables and the lace and the twisted stitches. So maybe do them on 2.5 if you normally do them on 2.25. I'm so, so proud of them. Like, those are a work of art. It reminds me of like Roman architecture, like Italian museums and columns and everything. It, it's so pretty. Um, I made mine in Regia for ply silk. So those have silk in it. And uh, so far, almost so has everything that I've shown you on this project. Like the two camisoles and this has silk in it. It was quite tedious to do. The first one took a lot of time, but by the time I was doing the second sock, I honestly thought I was like much faster, and I still needed needed to look at the chart for most of it, but not all the time, and it was quite intuitive and repetitive, and I was faster at doing the cables. Uh, I was trying to do as many as I could without a cable needle, but I still needed the cable needle for quite a lot of them. 
Um, I was happy to be casting on the second sock like really really fast and forcing myself because it was a challenge and you need to do one of the, one pair of sock a month for four months. I really didn't want to delay anything any further, so I cast on the second sock, even though normally I probably would have left it for a bit and then it could have snowballed. I also found the first sock to be slower to do because I needed to constantly kind of put it on and try it on to see when to stop for the leg, when to stop for the foot, blah blah blah. And then the second sock is always easier because you put on your Ravelry page like, oh, so then I did like five repeats for the foot and then you stop at five repeats on the second without needing to try it on. Um, the cast on, she recommends a tubular Italian cast on, but I didn't, I just did my German twisted cast on and it's really stretchy and I'm happy with it and I didn't want to bother. So. Really, really happy with these. I'll put the price of these below. I have a bit of Regia 4 ply left over. Highly recommend the yarn. Like, it's so luxurious and silky to work with. Stitch definition is great. I cannot say yet how well they wear because I haven't worn these out too much. But what I'm planning to do, I know Handmade by Florence is also uh, thinking of doing that, uh, is she's been collating and gathering data for a year of sock knitting of all the different sock yarns and she will do a review. I intend to do that too because for my own purposes I've been trying to try out as many different sock yarns as possible. This was my first time using the Regia 4 ply silk and because I'm gonna have that information anyway I thought it'd be nice to share it with you as well in case you were wondering the differences between the sock yarns and yeah so I'll do a sock yarn review at some point once I gather more data for science, you know, for, for science purposes. It's not because I like knitting, no, 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 it's for you guys that I do it. So Sari has already teased what the second pair of socks of the challenge will be, the knit along. Uh, I think they're called the Minerva socks and I like them less. They're meant, they're toe up, first of all, which, oh, that's hor horrible. I hate that, but it's a challenge, so I will do my best and I will oblige. And then they're meant to be looking like little tulips, I think, or like definitely flowers. Which obviously you can only get if you're starting this toe up because of the direction of stitches. So I think it'll be a good like out of comfort zone thing to do toe up. I might do them in my red yak yarn, like red yak for ply, because like red tulips would be nice. Worried about the fuzz though and losing the stitch definition on the tulips. But I can't do it in my hand dyed because then you would definitely lose the definition of the tulips. And even though I'm not as excited about this pattern as I was about the summer sol solstice socks, it's like, I don't hate them either. I'll be really happy to have another pair of socks. So I'm happy to be doing them. And I'm, I look forward to seeing what the third pair of socks will be then in August. But yeah, I think that's it for this. I will show another finished item now that you actually have been able to see at the corner of the video this whole time. I will go get it now. This is my little snake plant amigurumi. So here it is, it's really cute, there's quite a lot of leaves, I think there's 10 different leaves and three different sizes of them, so there's small leaves, medium leaves, large leaves. The pattern is free, it's a crochet pattern and it was a bit of a slog, like I had a lot of steam at the beginning like a month ago, then I completely stopped, then I finally picked this up again like this week because I wanted it like off the hook. And I'm happy I did because it was quite satisfying and like getting all that dopamine to click on the Ravelry button to click like finished project. I used a 3.5 millimeter hook. Doing the leaves was a bit annoying because you're having to change colors quite a lot. But the designer, and it's a free pattern, and the designer gives you really good instructions on how to carry your yarn so that you don't need to have like a million ends to weave in. Then you get a wire. So if you look like I can bend these you get a wire and you put that chartreuse yarn all around to hide the wire and then you stuff this, I stuffed it with yarn ends, feeling very thrifty I put some cardboard at the bottom so it's very sturdy and self-standing so I've got my cardboard, all my yarn ends and then you sew these to the dirt which was very annoying to do, it was really really finicky and tricky I almost stabbed myself with the wires like a million times so it was quite finicky and I did not like doing that, it was a pain. And then once you have that little top, you put it in the pot and then you sew it down. And I'm really happy with how I did that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see because I can't see what I'm doing. But I think it's very seamless and invisible 
how like the edge of that plant pot and the soil I'm super happy with that yeah so yeah I think I'm feeling like mm, meh about this like I'm happy it's done I'm not overjoyed at it I think from far away it's great and it's great decor but from up close and from the back you can see like all my ends which is quite ugly but like what else am I meant to do I can't really hide them anywhere here you can see like the wire of one of them So, yeah, not thrilled, but happy it's done. Definitely will be a while before I do another one of these or like something similar. But yeah, I recommend that if, like I recommend the pattern. The pattern was written amazingly well, gave you everything that you needed to go into your own project. And then it's just a matter of having the patience to do it well and properly instead of trying to rush through because you want it done. <laughs> And I used uh, acrylic scraps for this. I don't remember the yarns, like I don't have the labels anymore. And I'm just trying to use up all that <laughs> acrylic stash that I had from my crochet days. Uh, okay, the next project that I have finished is a vest. I will show you that. Ta-da! This is the unnamed cabled vest by uh, Hyris Makes. With, oh yeah, I really, really like this. This is my first cable project that I finished and it's all blocked and everything and I think this is absolutely stunning, it's, it's beautiful, like the design is amazing and neat and very well thought out and, and charted and easy to follow. I was test knitting this by the way, so it's still in testing, but it was a pleasure to knit, it was super like potato chippy, like just keep on wanting to reach the next step. I used the fiber company Lore. So this is the yarn that I used. It's <laughs> massive. This is one skein. Uh, it's 100 grams. It's 100% lamb's wool from Kent, sourced and produced in England. It's like a woolen spun DK, so it, it runs really thick. It's it's a nice like blue gray shade that I was obsessed with when I bought this. But then in retrospect, I was kind of like, oh, it, like it's a little bit boring. But I think it's very wearable, and like it's, it's it's not a neutral, so it's got a bit of of color, but it's not in your face. So yeah, um, I really love the yarn, like one hundred percent smitten by this. I want to make all the woolly jumpers and all the cable jumpers. They've got a bunch of other colors like creams and grays and and granite grays, and I really want to make a cabled iron jumper with this yarn. It's a bit pricey, but I feel like I I it's totally worth it. Like I can see why. It's a pleasure to weave in your ends as well because you just know it's gonna get so secure and welded shut like with the yarn you're being like you're weaving in. The fit of this p pattern is amazing. Like the cables were quite tight at the beginning, but even then like you had a bit of negative ease and it was really nice like form fitting. Then I blocked it and it opened up and it's I love the fit on me. I love 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 this. I the pattern has changed a bit since because my version had a bit too many stitches being picked up at the arm holes and the v-neck and she has since then changed the pattern to have a bit less so if that's something that you're worried about looking at my version don't worry that has been fixed but I'm really happy with mine still and I'm not going to change it because I don't think it was overly like crowded anyway. I did the tubular 2x2 two two bind off for uh, the armholes and the body at the bottom. I cropped it a little bit. There's two lengths. There's cropped and full length. I did the crop and I still removed a couple like rows. I think I, I removed maybe 10 rows and then I repeated the last row one time and then did the ribbing. I really recommend doing the 2x2. Two two. I didn't do any setup rounds for the tubular, like any sort of like, I, I, the setup round I did was to rearrange them, but I didn't do any double knitting before binding off because I thought it was already really bulky. The designer recommends if you're doing this pattern to use another woolen spun yarn, so a recommendation would be Brusca by Retrosaria Rosa Pomar or Rawwork uh, DK would be a really good one to do. But any sort of like thick DK woolen spun one, even like maybe iron, like maybe worsted depending on your gauge, just gauge swatch. It's very important to gauge swatch and the pattern has instructions on how to gauge swatch which, oh, I love it when you do that. That is so convenient. I just love following instructions and if you're holding my hand from the very beginning, yes, I'm happy to be there with you. 
So, um, the very excited news about this thing that I've been keeping a little secret here, I didn't even tell you in the intro, but I'm hosting a giveaway because I'm so in love with this project, I'm so in love with this yarn. This was my first testnet, I was kind of talking about this, I think in like my early podcast episode, like maybe number two, and we're at like 12 already, so anyway, I'm, I'm all filled with joy, I want to share the joy. Long story short, I'm going to be giving away the yarn to make this project, I have two skeins of lore left, and I used exactly two skeins to make mine. So I made the size 3 of this pattern, so if you make the size 1, 2 or 3, and you crop it a little bit, and you're not afraid of some yarn chicken, this could be enough for you to make this project in this color. And if you're in one of the larger sizes, then you'll need to get maybe one more skein, or perhaps two, I'm not sure. I'll have to look at, like, you'll have to look at the pattern yardages. But also you don't have to use this yarn for this project if you don't want to. This would be a lovely hat, maybe a matching set, like cowl and hat, maybe mittens, color work, this would be lovely. Like it's really plump and very like squishy that for color work it would completely give you a, a smooth fabric, I believe. And I'm really, really happy to be giving you this yarn. Uh, again, I'll only open this to UK viewers. It's just a million times more like simple for me. So if you want to participate in this giveaway, then please comment below and include the word hashtag lore. And then that way I'll know to include you in the in the draw. And I'll keep this open until the next podcast episode, which will be when I come back from my holiday. So I'll keep this open until the 10th of July, after which I won't include any comments after the 10th of July. And then the other thing that will be given away is the... Uh, Iris from Iris Makes has very kindly offered to also give out a free copy of the pattern when it comes out. I think it'll come out a bit like late to July or beginning of August, so you won't receive the pattern right away, but you will when it comes out. Um, so she has very kindly offered to, to give a, a copy of the pattern, and I'm offering the yarn. So you could make this project if you like. If you like what I've done, then you can make your own. And I'm so, so, so happy. It's my first time kind of partnering with a designer to offer this to my viewers. So the rules, like I said, is to comment below, hashtag lore. You can just comment that if you want or flesh out your comments. It doesn't matter. And then be subscribed to my channel, like my video. And then if you have Instagram, then by all means, go and check out Hyris's, like Instagram. I'll put her username here below. And, her, and the link to her profile in my description box. So you can go and give her a follow on Instagram if you have Instagram. That would be lovely. And good luck to everyone. If you have any questions, then um, yeah, comment and I'll be happy to answer. Uh, as a caveat, again, I'll make sure, like just make sure you don't send your information to anyone who asks, who like scams or pretends or like bots or whatever. Just I'll announce the giveaway winners, winner in my next episode. And that's the only way that you'll know whether you've won or not, which is also why it's good if you subscribe, because that way you don't miss it if I announce it. I won't message you or email you or anything. I will announce it on YouTube. I think that's it for that vest and that giveaway. And yeah. So the total price for mine then, I like I said, I used two kinds of this. So here's the price that my vest cost. The other thing that I was kind of worried about with cropping it was that I stopped mid-diamond which um, normally in the cropped version and the full length version you're ending after a diamond but I don't think that me cutting a diamond in half was a problem and it's at the bottom of the body anyway like the top is where everything happens and like everything is very symmetrical and lovely and seamlessly like f f flows like it, the top is beautiful and that's where the attention of people is gonna be like when you're wearing something and then if my diamond is a little cropped like at the bottom of my body no one looks at my hips anyway, like, it's fine. So, yeah, I, I, it was a bit of a risk, but I took it and it paid off, so we're all good. Okay, I think that's it. I think I lied when I said I had seven finished objects. I only had six, but I have six and a half, actually. Because the next thing is a sock. I have finished one, and I'm doing the second one. So I will talk about my works in progress now. This is the, um, oh, I'm gonna get attacked in the comments because I don't know how to pronounce this. The Hygge socks. Hygge Season Socks by Sari Nordland, again, and here they are already. Well, here's one. So I blocked this yesterday, I believe, or two days ago, so it's a little damp, but not much. So yeah, I'm really happy with these. I'm using Stainless Garn 
Perfect, which is a DK Way sock yarn that has nylon in it, and I believe is superwash. And uh, these socks are like meant to be oversized. It's one size only, and I'm making mine on 2.75 millimeter instead of the three millimeter recommended in the pattern because I don't want mine to be way too big and I'm a loose knitter so usually I have to size down needles. So 2.75 I did everything to the length that the pattern recommended I'm just following the pattern. I also didn't do a tubular cast on I just did my German twisted cast on. You do this really nice little cable at the front like I think it's a horseshoe cable and then I stopped at the place that she recommended doing for the like cable pattern and then the toe is quite nice it's like a, a ribbed toe but not at the bottom the bottom is just stockinettes so I think I'll just take these off the blockers to show you what I mean with the toe yeah you'll be able to see more oh. so isn't that cool isn't that super cute you get this nice little toe that follows like all the pattern from the ribbing. So two by two rib. It's a really simple pattern, really simple little cable chart, which I think is also written if you want to follow that. Slip stitch heel. I um I picked up less stitches for my gusset. Just like one or two, because I thought it was gonna be too big and too roomy, and I was right, it is quite roomy, so I'm happy I did that. The fit is really great, they're obviously like big and oversized, so they'll be nice like ho home house socks. And my boyfriend even tried them on and they fit him, one size fits all. And he quite like that, he, he quite likes them, so I might do a pair for him for Christmas. I think he said he didn't want the cable, so I'll just follow exactly everything except the cable. And I'll do the ribbed toe, and I think I'll make them in red, like Christmas red. I think they'll be great. So a really good pattern to have for Christmas gifts. Who wouldn't want these house socks? Like they're great. I've cast on the second one, as you can see. I'm being a really good knitter for once. <laughs> so the reason why I'm doing a pair of socks, you might be wondering, while I'm in the middle of a, a sock challenge, it's purely based on like not a grudge, but like pettiness or whatever. Basically, I've been wanting to buy a lot of hand-dyed yarns recently, but I have a lot of hand-dyed yarn already, and I've been thinking I really need to get rid of, of some. So I've looked at the oldest kind of hand-dyed yarn that I have, and uh, it's this. I've already kind of caked it up. This is uh, from Ushita. Um, yeah, the company is Ushita. Ushita -ta. And this is the colorway Kitty. And I want to hold this double and make DK weight socks just to, to quickly get this out of my stash. It's a sock yarn with nylon and I wanted a contrast color and I was wondering whether this would be a good contrast color and I really think it is and it's DK as well. But I knew that I had this in my stash for the Hige season socks and I didn't know how much I would have left over so I thought I would do the Hige socks just for the purpose of seeing how much I have left after doing them and then doing those socks. So those are the socks I want to do. Those are the socks that I'm having to do first as a logistical step before getting to there. And having done one, I feel like I'm gonna have 10 grams left of the brown, which is not much. So not very reassuring. So what I might do is just have enough for like a heel and not contrast heel cuff and toe or I will just need to find another DK sock yarn or a fingering one to hold double for a contrast for this. But I was really looking forward to using that with that, but oh well. Um, so that's the reason why I'm doing those socks, but they're DK weight, they're working up incredibly fast, flying off the needles, even though I have to use a cable needle for the cable at the front, but really enjoying it, and I would recommend. I think that's it. So far I recommend the yarn, it's very round and plump, the color selection is quite nice, like they've got lots of nice neutral colors for socks. Definitely quite a lot of like masculine colors that I, I feel like I'm gonna definitely go and pick for all the men in my life, like my father, my brother maybe, and then like boyfriend's father and stuff. So I think I definitely like this yarn and it's quite affordable as well. I think for, for three skeins of yarn, I got them on sale, it was 9.36 and I need three skeins for those big socks. So yeah. Less than a tenner for a pair of socks in my books is uh, reasonable and those are usually the, the prices that I, I have for my socks 
Um, I never go above the £10 mark, I don't think, except obviously hand-dyed yarns. Okay, the next work in progress that I have is the Moonset Tea by Ozetta, which I think I showed in my last episode. So I'm using the Fiberco um, Meadow in the colorway Prairie, which I was obsessed with and was really happy to, to find in a shop in stock uh, like a couple months ago. And I think I showed it as an acquisition actually. And I'm making the size extra small because my gauge is a little bit off and it's gonna end up a bit too large. So if I did the size small, it would have ended up too, too large. I think is what my calculations were, I can't remember. I'm using a 2.75 millimeter needle and it's really small. Those are the smallest needles I've ever used for a garment. And I'm, I'm feeling it, like, the beginning was a bit tedious because you're doing, like, short rows at the back and you're making this, like, big, flat shape. But once you're past that, it's really fun. There's a lot of construction things happening. So even though you're knitting flat, like, it's quite engaging. And then after that, you join in the round and then it becomes really mindless and happy. So you do the color at the same time as you do the rest. So I already have the color and I will try and show you now. What I've got. Ta da! Yeah, isn't this the prettiest, like, gold color? I'm really happy with it. I feel like maybe that wouldn't be the color for my skin tone normally, but it works. Like, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. And it feels amazing. This is a mix of, like, llama, merino, silk, and linen. I think those are the four things that are in it. And it's incredibly soft, incredibly drapey. Ugh, it's just a dream to work with. I was saying that in the last episode, this has made me a bit obsessed with Meadow and I'm already planning like more projects to use it with. I feel like projects that work well with the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk would work well with Meadow. Meadow is more expensive. Um, this pattern is great. Like it's so clever, super nicely written. This is my first time doing an Ozetta pattern and I really, really like it. I really like her style of writing. I really like her design, like elements. This was super engaging to do, super fun. Like, I'm really happy with my pickups for the shoulder. Like you can see there's a bit of a seam, but it's really neat. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm super pleased with this. Like I feel like it's showcasing my skills as a knitter quite well. And like even here now, I'm feeling this on my chest and I just cannot wait to wear this t-shirt because I like making camisoles and it's quicker, but what I like to wear more are um, t-shirts and to feel them on my shoulders and everything. I think it's gonna be just amazing. I'm gonna just try and finish this ball of yarn. I have two and then I'll use my new skein to do the sleeves and then I'll use that the rest of that to then finish the body. I said in the last episode, what you are meant to do are eye cords, but I was thinking of maybe doing folded hems because I really want to try that. But on the other hand, I have quite a lot of t-shirts on my to-knit list that have folded hems already, and I don't need all of them to be folded hems, so maybe I'll just do eye cord and then do folded hems on like the right ones that need folded hems. Yeah, I think sometimes I can get a bit carried away with all the modifications I want to do on items, but I don't need to modify everything and sometimes like I'm really quite happy following a pattern to the letter and be happy with those results. Okay, the last thing, it's not even a saying, I'll just show you quickly the progress on it. It's my Augusta lace scarf that I was, um, that I've been working on since like the, the, the time I bought that yarn at a festival. It's a mix of yak and silk 50-50. The yarn is from Ayolaire yarn. And I got that at the Tangled Galashiels Yarn Festival, and this is just the progress I have. So it's quite slow. I was saying before that I was doing 10 rows a day. I've kind of fallen off that wagon, so I've not done that anymore. But it's a really good, like I know the pattern by heart, so I try and do it whenever, like if I'm going in the kitchen or something, um, while my boyfriend cooks, then I'll just work on that and do a few re repetitions. So it's fine, I was just wanting to show it for like accountability. Yes, this scarf still exists, that's the yarn. I think I've used 15 grams and there's like 35 left. So still a ways to go. I'm trying to use all of the yarn that I have. And I'll be really happy to have it. It feels great, the color is great. It's just kind of boring. And I've not been wanting to reach for it as much, but that's okay. Okay, that's all for my works in progress. As you can see, 
uh, I've been quite prolific. Um, I do want to say that I have quite a lot of free time for knitting. I don't have a lot like of life responsibilities outside of work. So I do have a lot of time to spend on this hobby, which means that I'm quite prolific. But I, I hope that you don't feel bad if you don't knit as much or if, if you don't make as many finished items as I do. Now, I'm not wanting the energy that I convey to be like, look at everything I make. I make all of the things all the time. I'm so fast and so proficient. Uh, that's not what I'm trying to do. It's more about like, oh, I'm so excited about all of those things. But yeah. The last section I want to talk about then here, we've been oh, over an hour already. I want to talk about some swatches and plans for the future. So I have done a few swatches. The first one is that I want to bring a knitting project for when I go to Belgium in a couple of weeks. Well, in a week now, actually. And I wanted to be a fingering weight sweater so that I know I won't run out of yarn while I'm there. Because there's no way I'll do a fingering weight sweater in a week. And I want to use some of my hand dyed yarn, like I said. So I bought some yarn from Zakami a few weeks ago. Uh, they were having a big, like, trying to destock everything that they had. So to make room for other things. So here's the color that I bought. It's like Lycoskimus or something. And it's a Baby Alpaca Silk Cashmere blend, fingering weight, 400 meters. Very beautiful, very drapey. It's a bit like blowing out a little bit. It's incredibly soft and, and beautiful. So I've made a swatch for that. And here it is. Yeah, I'm obsessed with it. It's super pretty. I made this on 3.25mm needles. This is for the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Maid. And yeah, I'm about two skinds of this hand-dyed yarn. So I have 800 meters. So I'm hoping to, to use up all of my yarn, basically. So I'll make the sleeves as long as I can, and I'll make the body as long as I can. And that's it. I'll do normal ribbing. I don't think I'll do twisted rib. I'm gonna try and just... I'm gonna try and make it easier for myself. Like, like I said, I don't want to make any... I don't want to modify this pattern too, too much. And I just want something easy to follow for a simple, classic, cozy raglan. And the, the real star of the show will be that yarn then, that I'm super excited to cast on. Uh, before we go on our holiday and to take it there with me and get some progress done. So yeah, so beautiful. The next thing that I've swatched for is I've been doing a lot of fingering weight projects and I was thinking that I am going to want some DK projects on the needles because otherwise, like my just to give a bit of, of variation to like my, my fingers and knitting. Um, so I've got this yarn in stash I bought on sale uh, in Lovecraft, 20%. This is the... Um, um, BC Garn Loch Lomond, which is also a woolen spun yarn, and the color is 19. And I got this to make the Joan sweater by Gregoria Fibers. And here's the swatch that I got. I started with the recommended needle size, and it was not on gauge at all. So I had to go down. I think she recommends four. She recommends four millimeter needles, and now I had to go down to a 3.5, and I'm still not on gauge. So instead of doing the size small, I'm doing the extra small, and then it'll end up a bit too large, which is what I want. And I'm really happy with like the fabric that I'm getting. Like it's very drapey, even though it's a thick yarn. Like it, so it's very drapey, very like lofty and plump and soft as well. Like it's definitely a bit more rustic than merino, but it's definitely next to skin soft for me. You can see a bit of rowing out with this, like I've blocked that, so maybe not as much, but I can see a bit of rowing out, and I, I could see it especially beforehand. So I hope that's fine. I'm not too, too bothered about rowing out, to be perfectly honest. I don't think it's as big an issue as like other people seem to be taking it when, when they get it, so I guess that's good that I'm not that much of a perfectionist. The only thing I guess is, I don't know if this color is me. I got this because I think she did it in that color and then a lot of people on Instagram did it so I did it and I don't know is this I think it'll be fine I think it's just very out there and not at all something that I have already so it'll be good to see whether it was a mistake or a, a great discovery I think it'll be fine like it's not like too close to my skin color or anything which is always the worry I just don't know if it's gonna be su suiting like complementary or if it'll wash me out or make me look pale or whatever. But I don't hate it. I think it's an interesting kind of 
color, like the Loch Lomond, they have quite a lot of Tweedy yarns, and it's always interesting to see like what's the main color and what's the Tweedy colors. So here the main is this kind of like pinkish beige, and then the Tweed is orange slash red, which is, it's, it's, it's interesting. And then the last swatch that I've made is another fingering weight and I've been wanting to use up my Knitting for Olive stuff. I've got some cotton merino and I wanted to make a camisole. And after much many deliberations about what camisole to use what yarn for, I've settled on camisole number 8 by My Favorite Things Knitwear, which has cables. And I want to use my Knitting for Olive like cotton merino in the colorway putty, which is this. It's a really, like, really, really great off-white it's really similar to the Sandless Garn putty, like kit, that I used for my Leon sweater in like the last episode. So yeah, but this one obviously has cotton in it. I think it's 70% cotton, 30% merino. And here's my swatch. So yeah, I think I like it and I'm on gauge, which is great. I went down a needle size again, so I'm using 2.75 instead of 3. So the thing with that, really quickly, then <laughs> I promise we'll be done, is I've already said before I'm not a huge fan of white yarns because I feel like you can see like mistakes and tension problems and gaps and stuff more. But holding this up now, I think this is quite a nice fabric. And I think this would actually look really cute. So I think, yeah, well, I'm really happy to be filming today because this has then convinced me that we're fine. I think I was overthinking it. I was worried it would be too see-through or we'd be seeing all the like black shadows and black spots like between the stitches, especially at the place where the cables twist. But I think this is gonna be great. So yeah. Great, thanks. I don't need to talk about this as much as I thought I, I did, and I'm convinced now. The other thing that I tried doing with that is um, making my pearls neater, because you know when you're doing a rib that has quite a lot of knit columns and a lot of pearl columns, like 2x2 two two at the minimum, or even like 3x3, three 4x4, three, four four, then you, you run the risk of having like the first and the last knit columns to be quite loose, because of the distance that the yarn has to travel between a knit and a pearl, especially if you're knitting English style, which I am. And I read a bunch of things on how to make it better. The first thing would be that when you're doing the first pearl on both sides, you tighten that one, but not the rest of them. And that would make it neater. And the other one is you could do Eastern purling, which is instead of knitting with and then wrapping your yarn counterclockwise, you're wrapping it clockwise, which is insane. So I've tried doing that for like one of the little ones and uh, it's, it's gonna be really hard to tell but like I think it was that one in the middle. Uh, so that one I did normally, that one I made my pearls tighter, that one I did my pearls tighter and then this one I did the eastern purling. So you, the eastern purling you're wrapping your yarn clockwise on your pearls but that means that on the wrong side these are twisted so then you will knit those through the back loop which is so much to keep in mind, like it's so much to keep track of of what you're doing. It was so unnatural. It took me so long to do those like 10 rows of doing that whole like clockwise purling and knitting through back loop. It was awful. It was like I had forgotten how to knit and was learning again. And it made the, it made the thing much neater, I must admit. But I don't know if it was worth it. I don't think it would be because this is already a fingering weight thing that will take me ages to do and I want to enjoy it and I wasn't enjoying the eastern purling so it was making it more beautiful but I wasn't enjoying it so you know pros and cons and I think that just the simple effort of making your first purl tighter but knitting everything as usual that was already making a big difference compared to doing nothing at all so I think I'll just settle on doing that I'll focus on making my first purl tighter and I will call that a good enough effort towards making that rib neater but I just wanted to bring this up in case people were not aware that there's this thing called Eastern purling where you can counteract that whole thing with the uneven ribbing but yeah 
So yeah, now that I've convinced myself that I do like this swatch after all, I might cast this on, like, soon. Yeah, so, as you can see, quite a lot of projects, and I guess there's not really that much time to talk about acquisitions, and it's not anyone's favourite part, is it, anyway? I bought a few things, but, like, some of them haven't arrived anyway. But one thing that I did want to mention, and, like, I still can't believe that this has happened, a very, very kind viewer messaged me when I announced the Knit Night a few, like, weeks ago, and they said, oh, can I have the link? And I sent the link to them, and I said, by the way, like, I saw your, like, Instagram, and I saw your, your Mia sweater that you've made in Zakami yarn, and it's absolutely stunning. I, I love it. Then she replied back saying, oh, thank you. It doesn't fit me very well, so I don't wear it. Do you want it? Uh, here are the measurements and I was like, oh my god, are you serious? Like, I mean, yeah, but like I want to give you money. I want to pay for postage I want to what can like are you sure and then she was like no 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 I accept nothing I will send you that sweater happy to happy for it to go to a good home and then she did send me the sweater which arrived which arrived yesterday and in the parcel were some extra goodies. Oh, we're very blowing out with the light there were some extra goodies in the parcel, which I was not expecting and she did not say that. And I'm so, so, so grateful. So there were two kinds of Knitting for Olive Merino in Dusty Olive, which is a color I've been coveting for so long. I love the olive colors. I think they suit me. So um, I will make a camisole with that. I am so, so, so happy to have it. She also sent me two kinds of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in Dusty Artichoke which again is a color that I have been coveting and really want a camisole like in this color. I think it will suit me and I'm so, 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 so happy to have this. And two skins is more than enough for a camisole. And then she sent me the leftovers that she didn't use for her sweater, which is the Zakami yarn in Brumation, which is like my favorite colorway that they've ever done. And it's 44% mohair, 58% superwash merino, fingering weight 400 meters. And she sends some Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, no, Soft Silk Mohair in Putty uh, to go together. And this is, this is perfect. This is amazing. And so here is the sweater. This is the Mia sweater. I'll probably show a photo on screen so you can see it properly. And the workmanship is absolutely flawless. Like there's twisted stitches at the collar, some broken rib at the sleeves. There's no color pulling whatsoever. Like she did an amazing job. Nice wide ribbing at the bottom. The fabric is amazing. It's very soft, it's very drapey, very flowy. Of course, it's gonna be a winter sweater. And I'm so happy to have this in my possession. Like, I didn't make this, and I think I like it more than anything I've ever made. Like, it's my perfect mix of colors. And she sent it to me with, like, those green and white yarns, which are also my colors. So, Erica, thank you so, 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 so much for this. You have no idea how happy it made me, how lucky I feel, and how grateful I am to you. Thank you a million. If you're ever, you know, coming to Edinburgh to visit Scotland, hit me up. We'll go to a yarn shop together and I can thank you properly. So yeah, just to end on that very, very positive, wholesome note. I think that's everything for today. I knew it was going to be a long one because I had so many finished items, but I'm glad. I feel like I was able to talk through things better than I was when I first tried filming a couple days ago. I will probably still do an end chat because I still feel like there's quite a lot like rummaging around in my head and like knocking on the walls. I've been feeling very like hyper, like almost kind of manic and just very yarny. Like there's just so much, so many videos I want to film and like very many ideas and very many projects as you can see that I, I want to do and so little time. But I feel very happy and I feel very content so I'm going on my holiday soon and before that is my birthday and just the day before that is my knit night. So like I said before, I really, really hope that you will join me for my birthday knit night. It's on the 1st of July. It's on Zoom. If you message me, I'll send you the link. There's been like 
a few people like messaging and asking for the link already so there'll definitely be some people there i'm really excited that people were interested and like the reception has been really good like some people were saying that they don't have knit nights where they live or like they don't have yarny friends so they were really looking forward to that like social outlet and we're happy that this was being organized so yeah this really confirmed my, my hunch that this was going to be something that would make people happy so yeah uh, message me for the link if you want to attend and if you can't make it that day I understand I hopefully will do more in the future if this works out as expected yeah like I said there won't be that many videos as I go on holiday and everything but I hope you will be patient and look forward to more content as and when it comes I hope you had a good time watching this video I hope you got some progress on your knitting after an hour and 20 minutes you probably did and participate in the giveaway if you live in the UK, remember, put hashtag lore in your comments for a chance to win this beautiful Fiberco yarn and a pattern from the lovely Iris from Iris Makes to make this cabled vest that I cannot wait to wear like in autumn with shirts. Hope to see you all then at knit night and if not that in my next video. Bye everyone, happy knitting!